So you and your wife, when you were coming up, when Logan was hustling, 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 trying to get out the mud, um, were you guys like building a business together at that point or were you guys kind of building two different empires? Yeah. So when I, when I left the gym to start my own, to start my own gym, that was December, 2013. And very similar with Shuck, that like I was still kind of partying. I was still kind of playing half in, half out, right? I was still, I was chasing women. I was very distracted. And I realized real quickly that if I actually wanted to build this business that was going to be successful, I needed to focus. And I hadn't, I hadn't taken care of one of the most important pieces, which was finding a mate, right? And as guys, we're all, we're all guys here. Uh, it's one of the strongest, strongest natural um urges temptation we have is we need to find a mate right and i was looking for lots of mates and i realized that it was very distracting to find lots of mates and like it was it was very distracting and i read this book you guys have probably all heard it maybe you guys have read it it was called it was it was written by napoleon hill it's called think and grow rich you guys read that book before yeah right and there's one chapter in there there's one chapter that changed my life right there's that book is great i've done I've done lots of like getting like digging deep on that book, but there's one chapter that in that moment changed my life. And it was a chapter called sex transmutation. And I don't know if you guys remember this chapter, but it really resonated with me because in the book, Napoleon Hill, he talks about this idea of sex transmutation, that the reason why most people aren't successful until their forties, fifties and sixties is because they spend their twenties and thirties and forties chasing tail, (laughs) right? They're freaking distracted. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I thought about that and he's and he started giving examples of that. I was like, oh my gosh, like that is me. Like I have like this I have a strong natural urge. Like I don't have to like I'm just like so focused. And when I get focused on that on on Chase Women, like it's all I do all day long. And I become like almost like obsessed with this idea of like trying to chase women. I was like, okay. I got to a place in my life where I realized like it wasn't serving me. Like it actually wasn't who I wanted to be or who I needed to be and didn't align with my business goals. I was like, but the fact that he said that I could use that energy, I could transfer that and I could take that energy that I have, this natural, this natural, um, this tendency to chase women, but I could use that in my business and I could create this massive empire. I was like, oh, that is it. But he also said that you still need to take care of that, of that urge. You need to take care of that. Like you basically need to find that person. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, boom. And so at that moment, I started looking, right? So instead of me looking in bars and looking on, on dating apps, for when, again, at that time, Tinder was like just on the rise. So I didn't even get to like experience Tinder, which is one of my, I still, I still regret. <laughs> That's probably a good thing, bro. So, <laughs> so I never I got to like experience Tinder. <laughs> But that's when I started looking. Okay, okay, I gotta look different places because I gotta find this person. I yeah, hold on, hold on. I, I want to tell a story about Tinder really quick. When it first came out, we're in college, and like this is when it first came out. One of my homies like chatted a girl on there. Ended up having her come to the dorm room, and we're all like, "Yo, they ain't no way." Because this is when it first came out. We're all like peeping out the windows and stuff. We're like, "Yo, yo, ain't no way it's gonna be a dude that comes, right?" Ended up being like a smoking chick. We were like, bro, <laughs> we're all on the app. <laughs> all right, time to get on Tinder. <laughs> Buddy. Yeah. But anyways, go ahead, my bad. Yeah, so I started I started realizing that I need someone stable in my life. I need somebody who was not going to be a floozy and is going to be in and out. And um, my buddy, ironically, who I, I lifted with, who... He didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't start the gym with me, but he was definitely like the person who was like encouraging me. And he worked with me at the, at the big box gym as a front desk person. And so he was like, dude, I'm, he was hanging out with this girl. I was like, I have this, I have this, uh, I have this gal. She's going through a divorce. And he, he, he exaggerated the story. He's like, he's like, he's like, she'll do things on the first date. Right. He didn't quite say that. I'll be, I'll, I'll keep it PG. Uh, I was like, Okay, sold, right? <laughs> and so we we go to this place called the Bozeman Hot Springs, and it was me and him and this girl, uh, his girl, and then he and, the, and they brought this other girl, and all of a sudden she came with this kid, right? I'm like, in my head, like I'm I, I'm not shitting you guys. I'm like, how is this gonna work? Like, is like, are they gonna watch the kid while we do things? Like, I was like, I was like. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was like, how's this going to work, right? And uh, it was funny because the first time that, that Katie and I met, like, she was super standoffish towards me. She, um, like, didn't give me too much time of day. And again, she had her kid there. She was playing with her kid the whole time. So we were kind of all sitting around the hot springs. I'm like, this is freaking awkward, right? And then, so at the very end, we kind of chatted just a little bit. But there was something about her that, like, she was, like, not interested in me, right? And I think as, as guys, it's like, we want what we can't have. And there's something about that that just, like, kind of like, drew me in. And then I was like, oh, this actually yeah. is probably what I need. I need somebody who's not uh, going to do crazy things on the first date. Someone who actually is, like, who's got uh, a kid who, like, doesn't want to go party, doesn't want to go drink, don't go things like that. And that ultimately was like, okay, Katie's actually the person I need. Right. Cause although like I've recognized that when I read the book, I didn't quite put it together. I, I was still, you know, we have our urges and I was like, Oh, and then I finally, I saw her and boom, that was it. And so I spent, then I thought I've I spent all my energy and time on her and get and wooing her and her daughter as well and trying to get them to, to love me and appreciate me. And so that was really the foundation of where my business journey started. Okay. And so again, that was probably four months when I started my, started my business. So Katie got to really experience, like she got to, she didn't get to see the, the, the first two and a half years of me being a personal trainer, but she was there within the first four months of me building my business, but she had her own, um, or she had a, she had a job. She worked as an office manager for a dentist office. She had worked there for man, five, six, seven years. And she was as high up in that business as she could. So she was office manager. She was like the one who made the, who called to make sure people were paying their bills for the collections. She got paid a nice commission on top of a, of a salary. She was like, she had, a, she had a good job, right? She had a good job. And um, yeah, so that was like 20, as I said, that was 2013 I started the business. So 2014 is when we met. And so it was probably three years that she watched me try to when i say try uh let I me mean try like try to build this business and i just i couldn't figure it out guys like i could not figure it out i, I was i beat my head against the wall like i worked my ass off i was you're talking about real estate or the gym? no this is still my fitness business this is still fitness okay. right so at, far, up to this point in 2014 you didn't really make any money no i was i was literally just getting by right i was, I was getting mm -hmm. by i, I expense on my personal expenses that way at least i wasn't getting double taxed but i was just barely getting by trying to figure it out and i worked my ass off from sun up to sundown i worked a lot and on the weekends i would try to figure out once i once i finally realized that oh now i need to plan for marketing and sales then i started doing research on the weekends and i would buy courses buy books um i didn't have any money to like really go invest in mentorship plus it wasn't even on my mind like no one had ever like introduced that concept to me and so i spent a lot of time trying to figure it out on myself and uh for about three years couldn't quite figure it out and then one day i was sitting there on facebook and i got this ad that came across my my feed and it was this guy saying he could fill my gym in 30 days right i was like yeah it's worth it's worth checking into right and then i, I clicked on it put my information in and there were some testimonials in there and his offer was he could fill my gym in 30 days and it wouldn't cost me anything I was like, well, that's a freaking amazing offer. Let me check that out a little yeah. bit more. <laughs> and so I dug into it and I opted in, tried to get on a schedule and like, there's no room for me on the schedule. I was like, oh, that's disappointing, right? Must be, must be busy. And then probably 10 minutes later, I got this Facebook request, a Facebook message from this guy named Alex. I was like, N didn't know who he was, right? But um after he messaged me, I went and looked at his profile and the very first video of him was a video of him squatting 455 pounds for three reps. I can still remember. I still remember it. Right. And he's wearing, he's wearing squat shoes. So again, I'm not sure how much, uh, how, how into weight training you guys are, but basically like you have these squat shoes they are called do wins. They're like weightlifting shoes. Basically you only get those shoes if you're like a freaking lifter. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was wearing these, he's wearing these do wins and he's wearing knee sleeves and squatted 455 for three. I was like, Oh, this is my, this is my dude. Right. Like I, tr yeah, like I ultimately do. my trust level went really high, even though I just opted in on Facebook ad. I was like, okay, this guy is like, I trust him. Right. Yeah. That's Cause like, I would trust somebody who, who squats 455 pounds. I would, that was just my thought <laughs> process. Maybe dumb, but that's what it was. I like that. <laughs> and so got on phone actually like we just messaged over or facebook messenger and he showed me a schedule and schedule was just like Ooh. like it was he's like sorry bro uh he's like but i can get you in on a saturday and i think that was like a thursday that 
I opted in. And so, um, oh, it was, it was a Friday. He's like, I can get you on Friday. I was like, cool. And so I got on a schedule and it wasn't even him. It was his assistant. I got on a call with on Friday and she started asking me questions, started qualifying me, asked me about my gym, asked me how much revenue I made, my employees, all this other stuff. And I like, I felt interrogated. I was like, damn, like, I'm not sure if I'm even good enough for this program. Right. And uh, she actually got the phone. And she, okay. Um, I think you can make it to the next step. Right. I think you're qualified to make it to the next step to actually chat with Alex. And so she booked me on a Saturday because in, no, it was, she showed me his schedule and his schedule was crazy. She's like, I have a spot on Saturday, 8 a.m. I was like, perfect. And so I was actually at Katie's house. Me and Katie did not live together. Again, this was by three years into us, into us dating. I was sitting on Katie's, in her bedroom while her and uh, our little daughter and her roommates were out there in, in the living room. It was a Saturday morning. I'm sitting there chatting with Alex. He's telling me about this program called Gym Launch and tell me about the offer and tell me about all this other stuff. I'm like, oh, dude, this actually makes sense. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like, well, how much does it cost, right? Get into that, get into that, into that piece of the conversation. And he's like, are you ready for the sticker shock? <laughs> My heart actually just sank a little bit. And I was like, go for it. He's like, it's 10K. And I just like, I sat there in silence and I was like, took a deep breath. I was like, what options do I have? Right? Like, is that up front? Is that option? Is, you know, is that like, is there some sort of payment plan? And he gave me two options. It was pay it all up front, or you can give me half now and half in 30 days. <laughs> and, uh, I remember in that moment, it was like testing. It was it, it, like, it tested me, it tested me my belief. And at that moment, I was like, it was no longer about Alex. It was just the belief in myself. And I was like, yeah, the word. And Alex, Alex told the story. He's, he's like, he's like, he's on the phone. I remember him on the phone after I said, it, and I just sat there. He's like, he's like, I sat there. I was like, I knew that the first person who, who said something lost. And uh, I, just, I didn't say anything. And then he, he said, he said, fuck it. <laughs> 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 and so, and that was it. Right. And so I gave my bank information and I told him, Hey, I actually don't have that money in the bank. Like I actually, here's, here's the funny part, guys. I had $10,000. I told you this, but I didn't have it in the bank because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't trust the money being in the bank. I had it under my pillowcase right. in a, in a crown Royal bag, right? It was a hundred dollar bills. It was 10 K <laughs> sitting underneath my pillow. I literally slept under this pillow. You know, it was like, it was like this, it was this money that I was going to use one day to do something with. I didn't know what I was gonna do with it, but it was just like, it was like, like my safety net. So I was like, Hey, uh, I'll get my information, but wait till Monday, um, to run it. Cause I got to go put the money in the bank account, right? Like it's, like, it's actually not even in there. It's underneath my freaking pillow. <laughs> and you have told him that, bro. He's going to run down. And... <laughs> so here, like it was 8 a.m. in the morning. I had promised a guy who I lifted with, a different guy who I lifted with to go help him move. And so Alex told me he was going to send me information. So I could log in. I could start getting down on the information. And like the quicker I got into it, like the faster I could start making money. He was like, dude, like you can make money right away. I was like, okay. But I already committed to helping this guy move. Um, and he lived like 25 miles away. And I remember telling kids like, hey, Katie, uh, signed up. I'll tell you more about it later, but I got to go. Right. And so I remember getting my in my truck literally moments after that, that phone call and I was driving. I can... <laughs> I still remember this moment. Like I remember like stopping at a stoplight and just like freaking crying, like just like crying my eyes out, dude. Just like my life's going to be different. I'm not, I'm, I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be for the better, but I knew it was going to be different. I was like, it could either go like, I lose, like I'm either going out of business or my life's going to go to the moon. And, uh, I remember crying and like, just like feeling that emotion. And, um, yeah, I drove 25 miles out to this guy's house and I helped him move. And all day I was just thinking about like this thing about, that I just poured in. Like, I just like gave all my money. That's all the money I had. I'm just like thinking about it all day long, but I also made that commitment to help him move. And so I spent, you know, half the day helping him. And then once I was done, I went, I drove back and I literally went right to the gym and I logged in and I went through the information I spent. So that was like Saturday. So I think I spent all day Saturday night, Sunday, as, as much as I could. And then Monday I had my meeting with my team. I had a small team, about three people with me. And I told them what I did. And I, 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 I remember looking at them, just looking at you guys. I was like, here's what I did. I bought this program. It's all my money. It's got to freaking work. 
and you guys are either doing this with me or I'm going to freaking do it myself. If I have to knock on every freaking door in Bozeman, Montana, I will freaking knock on a door to make this thing work. And that's like the message I delivered to them. They were like, okay, this dude's serious, right? They're gangster, bro. <laughs> and uh, on Tuesday, I turned the ads on. And Wednesday, I did my first freaking sale. And by that Saturday, I had sold 36 people at $500 and made 18 grand. Shut up. I'm talking about that's what I was talking like, about. No shit. I'm not like that first month I made 50 grand and, um, bro, holy just, crap. Yeah. It just like, that's, that's what happened. And you so that was my, that was my introduction to the business world, right? For three years, like in mind you, the, the previous year I had made 50 grand the entire year. Right. You burned the shit. And so bro. Why, bro? that's when my business was like, whew, that was like to, uh, to the moon. Right. But it took a lot of time. It took a lot of sacrifice. It took a lot of like, I'm not sure if this shit was going to work. <laughs> what year was that? That was 2017. Right. And so. you started at, at like 2014. So that whole yeah. entire three year period, you were hustling. And you're like, yo, why the heck isn't this shit working? I was just banging and, my head against the wall, man. Just yeah. banging it. But I was, I was learning. I was learning, you know, and that's the, that's the part that now looking back on is like, I was learning. That's what I had to go through. I had to go through that. And like, while, well, again, in, in like my story is very like dramatic because I literally went from nothing to a lot overnight, but like I was acquiring those skill sets over the course of time. And the benefit that I learned in that program from Alex was that he just actually made everything make sense to me. So like when I saw the information, I was just like, oh yes. Oh, like it just all made sense. Right. Just like it, it was what I needed. Like I had the package. I, I understood the, I understood all the skill sets separately, but he packaged it for me in a, in a way that it was very actionable. And I was just able to go like this. Right. And so I wouldn't have been as successful. I wouldn't have actually been beating my head against the wall for those previous three years of me in business. And then even the two years before that of me working for somebody else. Right. So like, it just was like the, all those skill sets, it just took time for me to be able to be able to utilize those uh, in, in, in a way that I was able to monetize them. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Right. So mm-hmm. anyway, and so that was, I was very lucky because that was like I was one of Alex's first um, clients and I had a good relationship with him. And he like he was texting me all the time. He was like the only the only reason, guys, that I sold 100 people. So the, reason, the only reason I made 50 grand is because of Alex, because after I sold those first 36 people, I was done. I was like, I'm good. Right. Like I, got, I was like, I made the money back. Like, I'm good. And he's like, he's like, Jim launch was the first thing. He's like, I have another thing. It's called Jim Legacy. It's like, that's actually the cool shit. Like, that's where you actually get to make money without you doing anything. And like, I'll teach you about the system, teach you how to hire people, I'll tell you all these other things. And you'll be able to make seven figures. And I was like, okay, that sounds cool. He's like, but the only way you can get inside that program is if you sell 100 people. I was like, oh, okay. And I had a small gym, guys. I had a really small gym. Like, I just found a picture. I can share it with you guys later if you guys want to like like my gym was 800 square feet okay it was super small and think about this 36 people in one week like and i'm selling 100 people like i didn't have place for all these people like our classes were eight at at, at the time <laughs> we blew that out of the water like i had class with like 30 freaking people in it because like i had people in the parking lot like, i didn't have people in I put me in the parking lot to be able to do this and the only reason i did it is because alex said that i couldn't get into this thing called legacy unless i sold 100 people so i was just like I'm going to do it, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. We're, not, we're no. not talking about just like, like, who's Alex, bro? Like, I don't think, I don't think the people know. Oh, that. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. A year ago, nobody would know who Alex is. Now, almost everyone knows who Alex is, at least in the entrepreneurship space. So, Alex Hermosi, um, he's big on YouTube now. And honestly, the guy is freaking amazing. He's a great business mind. He's a, he's a great human being. And uh, I just was very, very lucky very grateful to be where I was in that situation. And just like some things are fate. Some things are lucky, very lucky, very fortunate. And so to have somebody in that situation, be able to take you by the hand. Um, again, just super lucky. And obviously like the results are in fitness, but as we'll start to hopefully transition here a little bit into real estate, like those skill sets I learned from fitness and from that program have translated into real estate and allowed me to just shortcut a process because of somebody showed me the way. Right. And it's why I'm so grateful for mentorship 